So uh, I want to talk a little bit more about the idea of a construct. Uh, in, in the last video, I gave a definition of a construct as an explanatory an explanatory variable uh, that cannot cannot be directly observed. So my example there was gravity, the idea that we know there's something there that is causing all these different phenomena that we see in the world that's causing the things out there to act the way they are. We don't know exactly what it is or all of its characteristics or how it works. We can't directly observe it, but it's still a real thing. It's still a real phenomenon in the universe. Uh, and so we give it a name. We call it gravity. And we try to say how the different parts of it are related to one another or in what way it is causing the effects it's having. And the construct, the, 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 the sort of idea that we come up with, and, and that's why, by the way, why it's called a construct, is because we are constructing this notion of how this variable works, what it is. Uh, this thing that we come up with, we can use it to explain things, we can use it to predict things, uh, and depending on how accurate this uh, construct is, it may correctly explain and correctly predict things, or, or it may fail to do so. And that will be an indication that our construct is not quite correct, that we need to change it. Uh, for example, I talked before about Newton uh, having his universal law of gravitation, and it turned out that that works most of the time. And it still works, it works so well most of the time that it's still used today. But it's not correct, and there are some cases in which uh, his equations that, or formulae, formulae that he came up with don't uh, hold true. And so then you need to go to Einstein's model, to Einstein's construct, uh, to really be able to say exactly what is going on and predict uh, and explain things correctly and accurately. Um, but before, uh, before I finish this video, um, actually the main thing that I want to talk about is uh, to give you some examples of constructs in psychology. Uh, many of the things we study in psychology are constructs because they're characteristics that have to do, or variables that have to do with the human mind or the brain. And those things are often, very often, uh, not directly observable. So if, for example, we take something like anxiety, we know uh, that there's something real going on here, but we can't just open up a person's head and look inside and say, oh, there's their anxiety. What we have is we have the effects of the anxiety. We have a knowledge of certain of, uh, characteristics or uh, you know, other variables that are sort of sub-variables that are part of anxiety. So, for example, somebody who is anxious will have, uh, will have certain emotions. We might call them negative emotional states, right? They might have these negative emotions. They might have certain typical behaviors. We might call them nervous behavior, right? Uh, somebody who is in an anxious state might also, uh, might also have certain negative not negative emotions or negative feelings, but negative thoughts, right? They might dwell on things. Um, dwelling is definitely, it's not just that they have the thought, but they tend to dwell or get stuck there. They tend to ruminate on negative thoughts. And in particular, these negative thoughts are usually about the future. In other words, it's not something you're scared of right now, but anxiety is about anticipating bad things that might happen and feeling negative emotions over the possibility that those things might happen. Um, this can also cause physiological changes that we can observe, like uh, muscular tension. The person might be very, uh, very tense. Uh, we might be able to measure their uh, saliva or their blood and, and find certain chemicals there. So there might be chemical changes, like the presence of, uh, of uh, stress hormones. Uh, so there might be chemical changes that happen that are characteristic of an, an anxious state. 
So the point here is we have this variable that we want to understand. We call the variable anxiety, but it's not something we can directly observe. So we really should be thinking about this. This is a construct, right? This anxiety is a construct because we cannot directly observe it. And one of the things that I want to show you is that often when we talk about a psychological variable or a psychological construct like anxiety, uh, it turns out that it's made up of many parts. There are the there are parts that are, are on the underlying causes of these different effects, and then the, there are the effects of of those things that we can de detect. Um, but it is uh, often a, a group of a whole bunch of different things that together we call anxiety. And those things tend to uh, be related in some way that we don't fully understand, um, but we're trying to figure out. And that's what a lot of our research is is doing is trying to figure out exactly what is the nature of this construct. Um, so another way of thinking about a construct is, I'll just put this down here, so we can think about a construct as, um, as I'm going to say, a cluster of, uh, of related variables. So a cluster of variables um, that co-vary. So remember, a variable is something that can change over time. What we're saying is that all of these different things, these different variables, are all part, really, of the one larger construct. And they are going to change together over time. So when someone is in an anxious state, they're going to have increased negative emotions and increased nervous behavior and increased negative ruminations. So that is what we mean by co-varying. Co means together. So they're varying together. As one of these things increases, another one also increases. They're varying together or co-varying. So we can often think of a construct as a cluster of these related variables that are changing or varying together. Now, one of the things we're going to see is that when we go to measure something like anxiety, there are going to be all kinds of concerns that come up that have to do with the nature of constructs, that have to do with the fact that we're not directly measuring the thing that we're trying to understand. So we want to understand anxiety, but we're not able to get in there and directly measure the anxiety. We have to measure one of the characteristics of it or one of the effects that it's having. And then these questions come up, questions like, did we did we really measure anxiety? So, for example, uh, let's say that I uh, I look at something like muscular tension and I measure how tense someone is. I might be getting at anxiety. So, somebody who's more tense might have a higher anxiety level, and someone who's less tense might have a lower anxiety level. But maybe that muscular tension is in this particular person actually related to a different construct that's, you know, that's something going on over here, uh, like they're just very alert, right? For some reason, they're very excited. It's a, it's a very interesting day for them or coming into my lab to be tested is making them feel very alert and they're sort of in this alert, um, physiologically aroused state. And so they experience muscular tension as a result of that. So in that case, uh, even though I'm measuring a characteristic that sometimes co-varies with anxiety, this characteristic might also be co-varying with something else. And so somebody who's got higher levels of this muscular tension, um, I might be measuring something totally different. And so if I'm trying to say in my study, hey, I'm measuring anxiety, well, in that case, I'm not actually measuring what I think I'm measuring. And that's a really big concern. And these, th that kind of thing really does happen and, and come up in, in, a, in many studies.